Tēnā kato katoa, ko Aotearoa, ko Ngarangi, te whapaparanga mai, ko māpiu te whenua, tupu ko Tukuiti o Hei Deputy Director General, Mental Health and Addiction, o e te mana tū haora, ko Robin Shearer o tēnā tātou katoa. Kia ora, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here and... Um, a little bit of a strange feeling is uh, this um, whole symposium was something that I thought was really important when I was back in my role at Te Pao Te Whakaranui as Chief Executive and um, also a really important transition for me to speak to you today. And I just wish to acknowledge firstly um, the events of Christchurch. Uh, this has changed our country forever and uh, I just wish to acknowledge Tony and the team who are here from Canterbury, the amazing job that you're doing. Um, uh, Home Care Medical, the team who have been managing the phones, the helplines over the last little while. The pouring out of help and um, willingness to step in. Uh, so just, I think it's really important during these events that we take the time to acknowledge that. And, it's all, you know, as the, our Prime Minister has spoken over the last couple of weeks, it makes you feel hopeful as a country that we can rally around. Um, but I guess it also gives you the grim reality of um, life is not, as you know it, from one day to the next, and we have to be prepared for change. Uh, so you would have also heard, for those of you who are at the uh, Addictions Leadership Forum yesterday, that there is a delay in the inquiry response now. And uh, part of what we're working on as a team is a psychosocial response um, for what's happened in Christchurch. And uh, a real challenging role for us as we've been, um, uh, as Josiah was saying, building the boat and trying to float it. Um, I'm saying building the plane and trying to fly it at the same time, so we've been um, really trying to get our work together in response to the inquiry and the change that's coming, and um, now doing this, and this is really important for us to just refocus a little bit. But the things that are coming through from a psychosocial response and the inquiry response are not too different. This is about how we do things differently. You would have heard from Ashley that this is a different ministry that we're looking at. Uh, there is, um, it's been nearly, I think, eight weeks for me in this role, and I put my hand up for this role because I want to do change and I want to see it happen, um, but I know that that's not just something I can do, that I need a team and to work in partnership uh, with many of you in order to make the really big change that needs to happen. It's not just tinkering around the edges. There is such an opportunity now because of the mandate of well-being and mental health being core to everything that we do. So let's not lose the opportunity and use it well. So uh, expectation is that in the second half of April there'll be a formal response to the inquiry. Um, Going back to why today, part of what we were doing at Te Pāta Whakaranui last year is putting in, like many of you, submissions to the inquiry response. Uh, that was largely involving workforce development and the need to engage our workforce, think about workforce as part of the change and um, the need to have long-term investment in workforce development. And that's been front of mind for me coming into this role. So as we build what is the end-to-end -end business of the Mental Health and Addiction Directorate in the Ministry of Health, uh, I've been thinking about my own team and workforce and the capability and things that we need to be doing differently, but very mindful that unless we have capability in our services and workforce, not just in specialist mental health, primary care, community, NGO sector, 
but our wider community and agencies, um, we're not going to be able to make change without the right people. And as Ashley indicated, uh, this is not just a health response we need to think about. So one of the important first things that I've been doing is connecting with other agencies in the work that we are doing. And again, I feel very hopeful because many of those other agencies want to do their bit to support mental health and wellbeing and addiction issues in our community. So this symposium was something that I felt was an important opportunity. So to Po have a leadership role, uh, to bring uh, events together for the sector, and I was just reflecting last year that huge change is coming. Why don't we start having some more conversations about the challenge of it, what it looks like, how we could do it differently, how we could do it better. There isn't a one-size-fits-all, as you would have heard this morning. We are on the pre precipice of something pretty big and amazing, and it's not all going to happen overnight, as someone once said, um, but it will happen. And there's lots of levers that need to be pulled for that to um, go forth. Part of what I want to reflect on is uh, some of the value through uh, our relationship internationally. So one of the things over the last week or two has been the outpouring of support through our international networks of people who are wanting to help, who we've connected through, um, through the International Initiative for Mental Health Leadership, MHL. It provides us a network of international expertise that perhaps we wouldn't ordinarily have. We also contribute to that network. Uh, we can say over the years that we've proudly been able to talk about the great progress that we've made in services. And if you look at our performance uh, compared to uh, some of our colleagues internationally, we're not doing too bad. We're not doing the best we could, but we're not doing too bad. We're about middle of the road, but I'd say perhaps there's an opportunity to get back up there and be seen as the leaders internationally for mental health and addiction services, and that is our opportunity. Okay, hopefully I do this. There. Okay, so you've heard about what's needed. Um, through He Ara Oranga. Part of the, this, if we're going to get this system right and make things attainable for everyone, is making it easy. So I've reflected in the last few weeks of the number, the great number of organisations, brands, things we have at our fingertips to be helping people, to be supporting people. Is that easy to navigate? No, it's not. Um, so I'm someone who's worked around the system for a lot of years. We have a lot of brands. We have amazing web resources. We've got training. We've got workforce centres. Many, many agencies doing wonderful, amazing things. It is a challenge to coordinate and harness our efforts so we're all moving in the right direction. More importantly, for our public, our community, to know where they can go to at any time of the day or night for something that meets their needs. So it's not necessarily that we need to throw just more money at our system, but it is to make it easier to navigate and to, in some ways, unpick some of the confusion. Because between agencies, it gets quite hard to really get someone through to the place they need to be to get the right help. This is um, describing a vision of what we want. And I really do think we need to think about the approaches that we need to take in order to achieve that vision. Um, Ashley stole my thunder on this slide. <laughs> Uh, but part of what I want to talk about is the role of implementation science. And this isn't easy. We all say we want change, um, but
but we all find it individually really hard to do. I'm right in the midst of all of that at the moment, where we've got 100 priorities, things come at you, and how do you step back and be able to see the great methodology that should be used in implementation science for change? And in some ways, I've had to talk a lot to myself over the last few weeks about uh, stepping back to remember where we're going and to ensure that you don't kind of get caught in the, the big machine that can swirl you up as a leader and not see where we need to be going and pointing ourselves in the right direction and not getting too distracted by all of the things that come at you. And I know that is a real challenge for our frontline workforce and for all of us who really want to make a difference to do change well. So we reluctantly put our hands up and go, yes, we want to do it, but we know it's really hard and it requires a lot of effort and it's also the effort to connect with people and with the different organisations doing work and how do you take time to step out of what you're in in order to do that. Um, there's a reason I think that this event was oversubscribed, that it, people want to know how to do this and um, you will all take something different away at the end of the day, and that's all right, because we're human beings, we're all going to approach this from our own experiences and see change through our different lenses. Um, but I think what I would say is this is oversubscribed because you're all interested in being part of the change. Uh, this has created a bit of curiosity so I think the poor team at Depo have been overwhelmed by people going, I want to be on a table and get there, and what do I do, and how do I contribute? Um, so, you know, I think the team are now thinking about how to kind of bring this out to um, the rest of the community, and how amazing it is that we've got people who are dialing in from Western Australia or where else, um, who are also interested in this. So there is... A, interest everywhere in the whole change thing. Uh, it's not an exact science, but um, science can help us get there and, and considering implementation and monitoring progress and doing this well becomes even more important when we have a big opportunity that is coming from this inquiry and the recommendations. Um, so just, I attended a, a really great workshop, um, there's a risk of saying that always, but uh, last year at um, the IIMHL meeting in Sweden, and it was run by a great organisation in Canada who's been set up to support implementation and change with services, and they're based in Ontario, and so some of this information I'm passing on from that, it really got me thinking a lot last year about um, how we get agencies, like our workforce agencies, um, we've got the Health Quality Safety Commission, how do we harness the right things to get change happening from an implementation science perspective? So this is what it means, and I put a plug in for it because it can really help us make progress. And I guess going back to the challenge of change, in order to do this well, it is the ability to step back and see what's going on, ask questions and have some rigour in making that change happen well. Um, I guess to say that um, what one of the things that struck me in the discussion about the workshop and has been my own experience in the workforce development space is that things alone, these components alone, right slide, will not make change happen or implementation come out with the right outcome. Uh, it's a combination of things. So these things are all necessary for 
implementation to be successful. And when we're talking about change, we're thinking about the outcome that we want to achieve and the steps to get there. All of these things on their own won't get the efforts that we want. They're necessary, but they're not completely sufficient. I'd say ultimately, it is about people, relationships, engagement, and buy-in. And we've already heard about co-design for those involved in the change. And here's the challenge about that. You've got to get the right people in the room uh, and be able to have some quite difficult conversations and move forward. And I think we might have struggled with some of that over the years. Uh, but you know, some of the implementation science process can really help us have those conversations. Readiness is a really important factor. Um, so when we're thinking about the change that needs to happen, uh, how do we ensure that we can be prepared? So in some ways, changes that are coming at us, and I won't repeat what's in the 40 recommendations, were they a complete surprise to many of you? Probably not. Are they things that we should have been doing? Probably yes. Um, how do we ensure that we can get some preparedness for moving to something different? And I've been doing some very deep thinking about um, funding levers and outcomes, uh, workforce approaches, how do we do co-design approaches in the ministry how do we effectively engage Māori in everything we're doing? Uh, how do we do stakeholder engagement uh, well? We ourselves are struggling with how to do that effectively and with speed. And that is the, perhaps one of the challenges that we're going to have to think about, doing things that aren't going to be perfect, that get a result quite quickly, but knowing that Transitions will take time. So those might feel, that's, there's quite a few tensions in what I've just said. But I think the main thing is getting prepared for that now. Um, I'm hoping that you're already starting to do that in all of your roles and your organisations because the readiness factor, I'm hoping you're prepared for. And knowing that um, by the end of this year, we won't have it all done, but we would expect to be setting the groundwork for this. Leadership is a really important component uh, of, of any change process, and again, this is something I've reflected on a lot over the years. Uh, I've expressed at times some frustration, why, why when we all know that we need good leadership, hasn't it happened? We've, over the years, funded leadership programs and supported people with workforce development in this area. I think, for me, there was a couple of gems that, um, that I got from the MHL workshop last year, and there are some tensions around the type of leadership that we need for thinking about readiness for change and implementation of change. So we are looking at somewhat wicked problems if you think of the challenge of suicide, which doesn't just require a health response. This is a community response. This is a, a wicked problem. And our leadership needs to be something around championing change, looking at the barriers that prevent good outcomes for people, having really good communication, being open to criticism, uh, and having healthy debate. And I guess just standing up in its times, listening. Listening to what people are saying, 
needs to be different. And here's the other side of that. We also need to think about technical leadership. We do need to be using evidence. We need to understand what some of the solutions are and the supports for those solutions. We need to ensure that we've got substantial training for people, that we use documentation well, that we have the basics around supervision, follow-up, all of those things that we know are going to provide good solutions and outcomes, and getting the right structures in place. So again, there are some tensions in the two leadership components if you're thinking about adaptive and technical leadership, and sometimes changing your hat in order to accommodate becomes important. So thinking about the um, issue of evidence-based practice implementation and implementation science, and some themes really around what that looks like. So proactive leadership, anticipating what might be coming and addressing uh, some challenges, implementation challenges. Having leadership with knowledge and a deep understanding of evidence-based practice and implementation issues. We do need to be technical specialists in the field that we're working in. And I'm struck by the number of uh, offers of help that we've had over the last couple of weeks. We need to be very thoughtful uh, that about science driving decision making and what help gets put forward to vulnerable communities. That is really, really important. Rushing in at the wrong time can be damaging. So we do have to be very thoughtful about how we support people. Um, supporting leadership, being perseverant and being persistent and being unwavering in the use of evidence to drive good decision making despite challenges I'm in an interesting position at the moment in that I um, have a bit of a beaten path between the Ministry of Health Office in Molesworth Street and Parliament because there's such a strong interest from the Prime Minister's Office and the Minister of Health and other ministers in let's make this thing happen and do it fast and do it better. And there are some real challenges that I'm trying to balance in, in our team at the Ministry giving good advice. We must be, as stewards of the health system, be giving free and frank advice to, to our government and doing that in a way that's not too slow, that gets results quickly, and we don't end up in too many wrangles. I have to say it's really drawn on my negotiation skills. <laughs> um, and it's been a really interesting and fun challenge in a way to, to get my brain working differently and to think about who I need to get on the end of the phone to ask advice from. Because this isn't, we don't have a fully formed team at the Ministry of Health that knows everything about what needs to be done. So, you know, we need to find ways to to draw in to the experience that we have in our community here in Aotearoa and internationally that helps us give that advice to be the best it can be. So in many ways, um, that is about flying the plane and building it too. I would say, um, Ron um, and, and the team this morning, um, our wonderful inquiry panel, uh, get started, get better, think about continuous quality improvement. Um, I think there's been some real challenge in the, the work that's been happening with Health Quality Safety Commission and, and getting that embedded in our services. Um, 
And I reflect on that also from the experience at, at Te Poata Whakaranui, where you can go into a service on any given day, do some training, support um, what you know is good practice, you step away and you're leaving people with the issue of trying to change things. And they're also facing what's coming through the door and it's really hard to get that right. Somehow, in our processes going forward, we need to ensure that we build our agency support in a really coordinated effort for that quality improvement and see our progress. We have a system, uh, data's not a um, four-letter word, that's a, a one you shouldn't use, but we do have a system of actually collecting information that is gathered at a national level. Um, it is being used at a local level. We do need to make that better and more real time in order to drive decision making, and there are some opportunities for that to grow. I'm very passionate about that area, and I think in terms of understanding where we're at and where we need to go, data can only be helpful. I don't think we need um, to wait for permission uh, to get on and do things differently and to enable change. What I'm uh, here for is to do that, um, find great work and do it. Um, Michael Bungie Steiner had a great workshop um, with the WISE group hearing about how you can find that. And uh, again, going back to what we're all here for, you know, this is about, um, I don't think anyone in this room is not here to make a difference in their community and, and in their jobs every day. Uh, in terms of the role of the, the Ministry of Health, so we are getting on and doing some of the work that's required for the um, He Ara Oranga outcomes. We've started with three major pieces of work, suicide prevention, uh, the building of the Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission, what that should look like, what it could look like, and the reform of the Mental Health Act legislation. Uh, that's coupled with the work that we already do around um, policy, and we're building, a, we've got a new policy team in place. Um, our workforce role, data, um, the legislative role that the Office of the Director has, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, one of the things I'm mindful of is that we also need to prioritise how we go about doing this and how we engage you in that work. Um, there's been some real challenge for us to get that right, and I think we just have to keep testing that with you. We don't want to turn anyone away from working with us, and trust me, we need all the help we can get. Um, but we've got to be also, you know, speaking to evidence-based and um, implementation science, we have to be really thoughtful about how we go about doing this. This is not um, in a year's time, things are going to look differently. I would hope that in five to 10 years' time, we have a different system and that we understand things better. And that isn't just what happens at the Ministry of Health. This is how we influence all of us and the work we do with community agencies and across government sector. Um, with our neighbours, our friends, our whanau, because all of those things make a difference. So I'm going to end there, and I'm very happy to, to take questions. I just want to, again, um, thank everyone for the amazing feedback and support that I've had coming into this role. I'm sure that there'll be times where I get uh, angry phone calls or emails. Um, that's part of the job. You know, that's standing up and being a leader, and that's okay too, and happy to own 
that not everything is going to go in the same way for everyone and can't please all of the people all the time, which is not a caveat for ending this presentation in this way. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, we, we have an amazing opportunity to work together and I'm really keen that we use the different approaches that I'm hearing from Ashley and my, my fellow team members at the Ministry of Health to, to be that different agency. So, um, kia ora everyone. <laughs>